Well, hello everybody, Matt Kloskowski here, and uh, I am actually out in uh, Los Angeles, California at Adobe Max this week. I'm teaching uh, at the conference all week, but uh, as always at Adobe Max, uh, they announce a whole bunch of updates to all their programs, and uh, my two favorites are Lightroom and Photoshop. I actually did a separate video on the updates for Lightroom, so I'll make sure I put a uh, link to that in the description, and of course, this video, we will take a look at what's new inside of Photoshop, okay? I'll take a look at my, my first favorite new feature here. Uh, let's head over into the Layers panel. I'm going to press Command or Control J to duplicate my layer. We have live blend mode view. Um, you know, I, I won't say it's about time, but it's kind of about time. <laughs> anyway, uh, so now when you go through your blend mode, you can get a live preview of what each one is going to look like. This is going to be huge for folks, especially starting out. Um, it just takes the guesswork out of figuring out what blend mode to use um, and also, you know, what blend mode you like and everything. I just think it, it just really removes a lot of that guesswork and will actually speed up people who are first coming into Lightroom or coming into Photoshop to be able to learn what these do. Next one is another really big area. Adobe uh, kind of gave a, a sneak peek of this last year as a whole dedicated space to content aware. Con wh whether you knew it or not, content aware it actually gets updated constantly. Every, every, almost every version of Photoshop, they're, they're tweaking things behind the scenes because I've always, I've seen it work better and better. Um, but what they did is they gave a whole space dedicated to it. So I'm the, I, I'll eventually dedicate a whole video uh, to this because it really needs that. But let me give you a quick idea of what you can do here. So let's say, you know, here's a shadow of a guy that was holding a flash for me. Uh, one of those vowels, the voice activated light stand. <laughs> and um, I'm going to take my lasso tool and I'm just going to select his shadow. Okay, then we're going to head up here to the edit menu and I'm going to go down. You will see now we have a whole section area here for content aware fill. Um, used to be we got to it inside of the fill dialog box. Now there's a whole area to go to. It's going to open up a dialog box here. It's own little dialog box. And now you've got a preview and we can kind of maneuver these and kind of set this aside so we can see a little bit of the actual photo. And we can see actual preview here. Let's just kind of scoot that over. Actually, the best thing to do, let's move over to here. Now, what it's doing is it's showing you a preview of what, how it's going to work, how it's going to fill. And, you know, as fate would have it, and a lot of people might redo the video at this point, because as fate would have it, you know what, guys? It did a really good job. Um, I practiced this about three times before I did this video. And each time it grabbed some of these trees up here. Um, but this time when I'm doing the video, I think it senses fear. I think it kind of knows that uh, I'm, I'm actually doing the live video. So here, let's let's expand it a little bit. Maybe I can get it to break. <laughs> see, you're going to see you're going to see that it actually worked really well. And I should just leave it at that. But no, we're going to go further. Um, let me see if I can get it. There we let's see. Give it a sec. OK, so you see how it's pulling in some of the trees up here. It's kind of what it was doing before. Well, over here on the left hand side, you can tell it what you want to choose from, okay? And there's a little brush, and you can hit the left and right bracket keys. So I can go over here, and I can start to paint and say, hey, no, 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 I want you to choose from this area over here and see if it gets any better. Not too bad. Uh, it's probably going to be the best it'll get because I, I expanded that selection quite a bit more than I should have. Um, so that might be the best we're going to get from it. But you get the idea that you can come over here, and you can actually start to brush and tell it intelligently where you want to pick from. And we've never really been able to do that before. We would have to revert to another tool. But now you can say, hey, I want you to sample from over here instead of over there. There's a whole slew of options over here that, that we can go into in another video. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview of this whole new interface for content aware. Okay, let's deselect that. There is a new frame tool. If you look down here in the toolbox, uh, it's keyboard shortcut is the letter K. So the frame tool will let you draw a frame in your photo. And then from there, let me go ahead and open up my finder window. I've got a whole bunch of photos in there. From there, you could take, you could either be inside of Photoshop and you could be in your libraries section, um, or you could open up your finder or Windows Explorer window and literally take a photo, drag it into the frame, and it'll automatically fit into that space there. So a uh, nice, easy way to start to combine different documents there. Uh, some other little small things that I think you'll like, and most of most of these things are 
most of the the rest of these things are going to be smaller things that you're it, for a lot of people are going to be like ah finally so commander control j let me duplicate that layer there this one this one is going to draw a lot of hatred from people i'm going to hate it at first but i i I get where it's coming from and I know that I will eventually like it. Okay. It's going to take me a few weeks. So I went into free transform commander control T for free transform. And normally if we wanted to transform this and we wanted to keep the aspect ratio of it, we would have to hold down the shift key. That is different from every other program in the entire world. Okay. Every other program in the entire world constrains proportions automatically. If you want to change that, then you hold down the shift key. Well, but Photoshop has always been the opposite. You have to hold down shift to make it constrain. Well, that has gone away. Now I am not holding down shift and it is constraining the proportions of this photo. If I hold down shift, I can then get it to change and maneuver and do whatever I want. This is, this has been in Photoshop for, for so many years it is sure to cause people um some problems but it's going to be one of those things i, I think you know, once people spend a, a few days or even a couple weeks with it um i think it's going to just it's going to be you know old hat you're, you're going to know exactly what to do and and then it just becomes a little bit more standardized with other programs so um there's one for you next one <laughs> this is going to seem simple um but I can tell you as an educator, this is something that has, has caused so many problems for folks. So I'm just, I'll grab my brush tool. I'm just going to do a whole bunch of different brush strokes here. Okay. Head up to the edit menu, right under there, undo, undo. This goes back to free transform. Uh, again, in before this, there was a, there was a, you had to use two keywords like command shift Z or command option Z or control alt Z, whatever it was to step backward. When you want to do multiple undos, again, in every other program in the entire world, you just press Command or Control Z. But in Photoshop, it was different. So now, undo is Command or Control Z. So if I just keep pressing undo, it does exactly what it should do. So I don't have to go figure out a different keyboard shortcut for it or go and change my shortcuts. It works the way that it actually really should. A couple other small things here. I'll go back into free transform command or control T. Once I transform something, a uh, real easy way, you don't even have to hit the check up here. You don't have to hit enter or anything like that. Uh, I free transformed, I'm moving it, and then I can just come over here and just click outside of that box and uh, it commits the transform for me. So that works in a couple of different places, uh, crop and uh, your transform tools and whatnot. If you are of the designer type world, uh, when you go into window color and opens up your color panel, usually it defaults to, I think, um, this one right here. But now you've got this new one called the color wheel, which actually makes it easier to choose uh, different complementary colors with the, the color that you've chosen as your foreground here. So just a, another one of those things. Again, more for people that are doing things from a design perspective and, and need to pick different colors. Let's see here. You see a little bit of a, a little home button in the top left corner. So you you used to only be able to get to the home screen, which a lot of people like to get to because uh, it has your your frequent files. And if you're a Lightroom user, you can get to your Lightroom collections inside of there. Um, you used to only be able to get to that if you had no photos open. But now that I have a photo open, I can click on the home screen and it'll take me. And now I'm inside of that home screen inside of here. And then I can just click back here and it'll take me back to my normal interface. Another uh, little option here that is going to be it, it's going to be welcomed for a lot of people that have been requesting it is let's say I go into uh, image image size and let's say I want to resize something or change it or whatever. Let's go to pixels here and I want it to be a very specific size. I can say, uh, you know, 1500 divided by two and hit, uh, hit go to the next uh, little section over there, go over there to height. Look, it did the, the, the math for me. I knew it was 750, but if you have more complicated numbers in there, you can see where that could come in handy. So uh, that's another little feature. And then this one, I've already changed it. So I, I don't know, you might not have even noticed it, but I love this feature because my eyesight is so bad. Um, if I go up here to my Photoshop preferences, and this would be under the edit menu on a PC, you go in here to workspace. We used to be able to scale the UI font size. OK, 
Okay, so I don't know anybody that wants it tiny, but I had small, medium, and large. I always change this to large, but what would happen is, is the UI font would scale and get bigger, but the rest of the little icons and everything would not. Well, now you can see here, there's a little checkbox to scale uh, the UI to font. So if you choose a larger font size here, your UI, all the little, little buttons and icons and all these little things are now bigger. Again, you might not have noticed it just because I started the, the video this way, but if you compare it to your screen, once you update, uh, you will definitely see that everything is larger. Again, for somebody that's got some, some eye problems, um, this definitely comes in handy. Don't forget after you make that change, you will have to restart Photoshop for it to take place. Uh, last little thing, I'm just going to put a link. I'll put a link on my website. If you go to the description, that'll take you over. Uh, I'll make sure I link you over to Adobe's webpage where they list all of what's new inside the latest version of Photoshop. And there's there's things inside of here, little tiny things that I didn't cover. Um, and if you want tutorials on everything, so there's a, a lot of good information in there as well. Okay, folks, thanks so much for, uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to show you one more. Wait, hold on. Uh, let's go to my type tool. There's one I missed. So the type tool, Number one, if I click, automatically puts text in there. The other thing that's cool about the type tool is uh, here, and I can commit just by clicking outside. I mentioned that one before. The other thing that's cool is I can take my move tool and just double click on the type. I don't even have to select the type tool and it selects my type for me. I said I wasn't gonna go into everything and just point you to that website, but once I saw it on the website, I felt like I had to talk about it, so. Anyway, hope you guys did enjoy the video and uh, thanks so much for stopping by. I will talk to you again real soon.